Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. My name is Emily, and uh, I'm your host, maker, artist. <laughs> and there is some struggle, yes, indeed. Um, so today's blog, um, I don't know what to, I don't know how to warn you about this one. <laughs> um, on, when I posted it on Facebook, I, I, I mentioned that the topic was going to be a bit taboo. Uh, so maybe just knowing that it's not a thing that is, um, talked about all that much is probably... That's probably all the warning you need. I mean, you know, it's like about aging. It's like about aging and being a lady. So, <laughs> uh, so this is episode 109. Uh, the blog is called uh, The Change, The Phone Booth, and A Sense of Doom. On my 40th birthday, I was struck with a sudden and horrifying sense of fatalism. I figured I'd overabsorbed the cultural preference for young women, that I'd overattached my sense of self-worth to my youth, even though I thought I knew better. I figured that the reason I felt like I was turning 80 instead of 40 was because I'd skipped the mandated mother stage and just went straight from maiden to crone. Then recently, on a podcast, the guest mentioned that a sense of impending doom was a very common experience for women going through what used to be euphemistically called the change. Now, a lot of us have a sense of impending doom these days, what with the political landscape looking like it's auditioning for a post-apocalyptic B-movie, but my sense of impending doom hit even before the actual impending doom. So I suspect it's partly the hormones shifting in a changing body. About two years ago, out of the blue... I began to get headaches, weird ones. According to the docs, it's migraines, and they have been debilitating, disabling, and pretty much took over the last two years of my life. I saw four different neurologists and headache specialists. Not one of them suggested that this sudden late onset of chronic migraine might be a result of perimenopause. Not one. It took the mother of a friend telling me about her migraines ending after menopause and suggesting mine could be the start of that for me to put the possible pieces together. Do I know for sure that this migraine situation is perimenopause? Nope. That's not really a thing that's knowable. You know why? Because despite the fact that every cis woman who lives long enough will go through it, there's no real medical conversation around it. Despite the fact that there are very real, very serious, very debilitating experiences for many women in the middle of that transformation, no one seems to be addressing it. So many women my age and older have been struggling all on their own with this or that symptom, while there may be a common explanation for our pain or our sense of doom or discomfort. Perimenopause is the process that leads to menopause, menopause being the definitive end of the menstrual cycle. And of course, this kind of reverse puberty is a perfectly natural, organic process. But just because it's natural and organic doesn't mean there won't be trouble, and that we shouldn't understand what's happening. Childbirth is also perfectly natural and organic, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't understand all of its phases and aspects. Just because something is natural doesn't mean there won't be trouble. And I have run into trouble. Many of my friends have also run into trouble. And I find myself pretty furious about how little the medical establishment has to say about it. In the same time period, my doctor insisted on my getting a mammogram. Just because I'm 44 and now's the time when they give them. There's quite a bit of controversy about the efficacy of all this breast screening. Quite a few people have suggested that it may do more harm than good. There's no history of breast cancer in my family, and there was no reason to suspect anything wrong. But my gynecologist said she couldn't give me the medication that might help with the hormone migraine situation without one. So 
there I was in a women's imaging center, getting my boobs squished in a machine and then called back the next day to have them squished another way because of asymmetries and then be sonogrammed and pushed around with a sonogram wand. And after all that stress, it turned out my breasts were fine, as we thought. So here I am having a completely unnecessary set of procedures that are uncomfortable, stressful, anxiety producing and time consuming, while the thing that is actually wrong, that is actually causing chaos in my body goes completely unaddressed. And sisters, I got really fucking pissed about it. I suddenly felt like, this goddamn medicalized world is like a Hollywood adolescent boy obsessed with boobs and vaginas. We've been pried open by speculums from an early age, but not particularly concerned with what is actually going on inside the person. The fact that we have this insane assembly line for mammography and no understanding or plan for perimenopause is ridiculous. Yes, breast cancer screening is important. I get it. But not every woman gets breast cancer, gratefully. And almost every single cis woman will go through perimenopause. That's half the adult population. And before it, maybe, kicked in for me, I knew next to nothing about it. And I'm a pretty reasonably informed woman. I knew about hot flashes. That was about the extent of it. Which, you know, it's okay. I'm allowed to not know things. But I get the sense that that's all a lot of doctors know about menopause as well. Here's the thing. Aside from compulsory mammogram and pelvic exams, women's health is dramatically underexamined. For the majority of modern medicine's history, men have been seen as the norm and women as the deviation. In clinical trials of many things, only men were studied and the results were applied to women. And one of the extraordinarily infuriating facts about this is that women were excluded from such things because we have a menstrual cycle. So rather than study the hormones or the varieties of the menstrual cycle, science and medicine have mostly just told women to go ask our mothers. This is an actual thing a doctor said to a woman asking about menopause. In treating my possible perimenopause symptoms, I've seen four neurologists, several physical therapists, two ophthalmologists, two behavioral optometrists, tried antidepressants, anticonvulsants, and endless triptans. The first thing in two years to make a real dramatic difference is a low dose of estrogen. I mean, here is modern medicine looking at everything but the source, everything but perimenopause. No one wants to talk about perimenopause or menopause. It is incredibly taboo. Initially, I suspect the more medically accurate language was supposed to help us make it less so. Like the movement to use anatomically correct language for our genitals, calling menopause menopause was once thought to be a way to liberate us from the stigma. Uh, But I don't think it has. So I'm liking the change, even if it sounds a little old fashioned. It is a good descriptor for what I'm experiencing. It makes me feel like a superhero in mid-transformation. I'm Peter Parker in the process of getting bitten by that radioactive spider. It doesn't necessarily feel good during the transformation itself, but once I come through it, I fully expect to be a more powerful superhero on the other side. And since no one can tell me whether or not the change I'm in the middle of is actually perimenopause, since there is no medically precise definition of this moment for me, the change is actually a more accurate description of what is happening to me. It's certainly a change, if not the change. And a lot of my friends are also going through a change, a transformation. We're going into a phone booth, like the one Clark Kent changes into Superman into. Maybe, since we don't really use phone booths anymore, we could co-opt the word. Like, when I explain what's been going on with me these last few years, I could just say, well, I've been in the phone booth. Because while these headaches suck a lot, while it has been no fun in this phone booth, I will say that the benefits of this transformation are not bad. Pretty much everything that drove me crazy about myself in my 20s has faded. 
In my youth, I was constantly beating myself up for being too nice, for putting up with things that I didn't like, for not saying what I thought. And I have, as I have entered the phone booth, grown much bolder, much less concerned about others, less fearful, and much more direct and clear. It's everything I wished I could have been 20 years ago. The phone booth has these terrible side effects, but it has given me the superpower of transforming myself into the person I wanted to be and never thought possible. So, menopause. I, I will confess it's still like a word that is, that just like doesn't feel good yet. Maybe as, maybe as I actually approach it, it'll be awesome. But right now it's just like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying though. I'm trying to just like be like, nope, this is what's happening. It's fine. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's happening though. That's the issue. Anyway, <laughs> I've already said it all. Um, so yeah, that's about, that's about women's health, women's health care. Maybe it's better elsewhere. I don't know. Is there a country in this world where women's health is taken seriously? If so, I'd like to move there. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I, I, this has taken me a little while to get um, recorded because I, I was trying to figure out what song I wanted to put here. And I was like, suddenly I was like, oh, well, of course. Like, it just has to be, it just has to be A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke, um, which is a song I love and, and has been sort of a song that I will just sing on my own for years. But um, I don't know. There's some, there's, it, it just doesn't feel like, I don't feel, somehow I feel like I'm not supposed to sing this song. <laughs> uh, and, and mostly I think that's just because, um, you know, it, it, the, Sam Cooke sang this song as like an anthem um, about, uh you know, the black experience and, and oppression and all of that stuff that, that like to sing it as a white lady just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is my song. But in this case, <laughs> with this particular topic, I just was like, oh, it's just so right on. Like, it's just like, oh, well, that's it. And then, so I was just messing around with it and I was like, well, yeah. And the more that I played it, the more I listened to it, the more I was like, it's just... Like, if you listen to it or, I guess, experience it in a particular way, like, there's this section where the, the lyrics are, I go to the movies, I go downtown, and somebody keeps telling me not to hang around or don't hang around. Um, you know, that's about racial discrimination in, in Sam Cooke's case. Um, but it's, like, it's the same for, for women in the sense that, like, we are not supposed to go places because... For, for a different reason, right? It's because it's not safe. Someone could attack you. You're not allowed to. Don't, you know, just be careful out there. Your your safety is, you know. And it's like, right. That's, I don't know. Anyway, I started to, to hear it that way, which I thought, oh, I mean, like, so I have to sing it. So, but then once I decided, okay, I'm going to work on it, I just could not get it to sound good. Um, partly because I think I was, I, so I was playing it on my acoustic because I've been in a kind of uh, acoustic zone. Maybe because of the lullabies. I don't know. I hadn't played my electric in a, in a good while. Um, so, yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, it the, the, this song belongs on the acoustic. It theoretically sounds good. Like, oh, I've got I've had this little finger-picking thing going on. But it just... Bleh. <laughs> and then I was like, I'll never get this blog out because I can't get this song. And then suddenly I just was like, what if I played it on the electric? And um, I don't know if it sounds better, but it felt better. <laughs> like, I, I feel like, uh, you know, a little, a little hint of punk guitar is, is, what, is what I needed to, to make it mm, all right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is uh, Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come. The amp settings that I had to put this in in GarageBand, I think they're called uh, Broken Up Brit, which I think is like code for light punk. 
Although weirdly, usually I'll actually use the old school punk uh, label. There's like um, Garage Band is weird. Like it tells you like the amps. They're, you know, they're not actually amps. They're just settings for various you know levels and whatnot. Um, but there is one called Old School Punk, and it actually doesn't sound quite as as crunchy as this Broken Up Brit one. So that's what I went with because it needed some crunch. And I still haven't figured out how to make my amp, like I can't, I can't record, like I can't find a setting on my amp and then figure out how to record through the amp and then into my computer. So that's, that's um, a learning curve that I have not yet um, seen the other side of. <laughs> anyway, enjoy, a change is gonna come. And um, if you don't hear from me for a lo little longer than expected, uh, it's just that I'm out of town and away from my microphone, but I will be back uh, soon. All right, friends. Until next time. Here is A Change Is Gonna Come. <laughs> Thank you.